Now that we have learned about schizophrenia, let's turn back to the eye. Most of the ophthalmic conditions in schizophrenia occurs on the retina. So it is important to understand the anatomy of the retina to understand how uh, the conditions present. To give a little bit of a context, the retina is the innermost layer of the eye, the outermost being the sclera, and the middle layer being the uvea. The anterior uvea consists of the iris and the ciliary muscles, and the posterior uvea, the choroid layer. When looking at the retina through a fundoscopy, you would be able to identify some of the important structures. The fovea and the macula lies on the temporal side of the retina. That would be observed uh, as you move more nasally or in the opposite direction um, from the patient's point of view, because on a fundoscopy, everything is flipped. The fovea and the macula contain the highest concentration of cones, and this is where your central vision is perceived. The optic disc uh, is in the opposite side or the, on the nasal retina, and this is where all the ganglion cell axons uh, throughout the retinal layer uh, collects for the exit from the eye. Uh, these collection of axons eventually become uh, the second cranial nerve or the optic nerve. Because this is a uh, collection of the axons, uh, there are no photoreceptors in this region and therefore uh, the optic disc is also known as a blind spot. You cannot uh, see any and per or perceive any light that converges on this blind spot. On the retina are also vessels. There are both veins and arteries that can be visualized with fundoscopy. And this vasculature supplies the um, retinal layers with nutrients and oxygen. Within the retinal layer, there are also multiple sublayers that help um, either supply nutrients or participate in an intricate system uh, to detect light and interpret it into an electrical signal. I have organized the general uh, sublayers of the retina uh, from the innermost to the outermost and eventually the choroid in this slide. And this is a more visual um, illustration of the layers that were uh, stated in the last slide. And you, so you see the bipolar layer, the horizontal cells, photoreceptors, the retinal pigment epithelium, as well as the Brooks membrane that divide uh, that border, that act as a border between the choroid and the retina. And with the eye overall, the uh, light first passes through the cornea and the anterior chamber, the iris can constrict or dilate to control the amount of light entering the eye. The light then passes through a clear lens, which then and then goes through the vitreous before hitting a specific part of the retina. So now that we've known learned some of the anatomy of the eye, let's uh, dive back into how schizophrenia is related to uh, the some of the eye abnormalities. So uh, before, we should note at this point that schizophrenia is a hyperdopaminergic state. Uh, in contrast, uh, Parkinson's uh, disease is a, is a disease that lacks dopamine. So they are uh, opposites, which means sometimes when you're treating schizophrenia uh, by depleting some of the dopamine production, uh, this can cause some of cause uh, some Parkinsonian symptoms and vice versa. And when there is a high level of dopamine, uh, there are four uh, dopamine-specific pathways in the brain. Uh, in schizophrenia, the mesolimbic pathway is elevated, saturated with uh, dopamine, and causes positive symptoms. 
uh, in contrast, the mesocortical uh, pathway has uh, observed a dopamine hypoactivity, and this causes negative and cognitive and affective symptoms. So the drugs can cause um, the other systems to go uh, activate too much. And uh, some of the typical antipsychotics actually can um, overactivate the negrostriatal and the tuberal hypophysial pathways. So although in the mesocortical pathway dopamine is hypoactive, overall uh, in the system there is uh, an elevated level of dopamine. And high dopamine in the brain means high dopamine in the retina because they're very close and linked with the optic nerve. Uh, high dopamine in the retinal D2 receptors, especially in the cones, this causes hyper-intense perception of color. Um, this in turn means that the patient will uh, experience difficulty uh, sensing contrast. So contrast, uh, if you look at the uh, picture right below that bullet point, you'll see a white background with black letters, right? And contrast is simply uh, our ability to distinguish that difference in the shading. Um, some of the schizophrenic patients uh, and other uh, others with impaired contrast sensitivity might have more difficulty uh, than others uh, to read some of the letters in the lower lines. We have already uh, discussed that in schizophrenia, uh, the macular volume and the macular area uh, diminishes. And because the macula and the fovea are responsible for central vision, um, this atrophying causes diminished visual acuity. And in just the previous slide, we discussed that schizophrenia with that excess level of dopamine can cause decreased contrast sensitivity. Now it's time to talk about the movements of the eyes. And take a look at this picture here. Uh, the series of um, pinkish purplish dots um, are, indi are indicating how the, what the participants see um, at any given time. So uh, in, healthy in healthy participants, when they were given a new picture or a scenery, uh, the, their eyes move um, all over the picture. They see, they try to see everything. It's exploratory. Um, but in comparison, uh, participants with schizophrenia, uh, their eyes tend to gaze at a very localized fashion. Uh, their exploratory eye movements, in other words, is very limited. And not only that, uh, during while looking at this scenery, when there was a visual pursuit, when there was a moving object, uh, there was a little difficulty in maintaining that visual pursuit. Uh, the eye could not track the object that was moving, and because it kept slowing down, but the brain orders the eye to um, keep up to that target, the eye uh, adjusts with the rapid late saccade to catch up to the moving object in focus. So these are uh, some of the uh, eye movement abnormalities that could be very interesting for future research. Now one sign that you can observe uh, with in the eye uh, with the schizophrenic patient uh, demonstrated by several studies is widened retinal venules. So when you're looking at the back of the eye uh, with a fundoscope, uh, you will see that there are these vessels spread um, across the retina, like in this picture. But they are not um, blue and red. They're all very um, reddish. And the one way to distinguish between venules and arterioles are by is by the width. Uh, venules are generally wider than the arterioles. But uh, what I mean by widened retinal venules is that the discrepancy of the width between the venule and the arterioles are exaggerated in those with schizophrenia. Uh, 
so they will look abnormally um, larger and wider. So what I've described so far, the symptoms and signs of retinopathy and eye movement abnormalities sound very uh, qualitative, shall we say. Uh, it, you're probably wondering uh, if there are ways to quantify um, these findings. And there are some investigations that can be done in terms of retinopathy. Uh, we'll introduce the OCT and the ERG. First, the OCT is optical coherence tomography. And this is a non-invasive -imi non imaging modality uh, that uses light waves to take cross-sections cross of the retina. This is great for measuring the thickness of the retinal layers. And actually, um, you, if you remember how I mentioned uh, the RNFL is thinned in those with schizophrenia, well, you can observe that here. Um, in ERG, ERG is electroretinography. Uh, this is a method where an electrode is attached at the cornea. This electrode detects the electric signals from the photoreceptors at the retina. Any abnormal signs would indicate problems in the retinal layer. And also in schizophrenia, uh, the ERG tends to demonstrate a diminished rod B-wave amplitude and longer latency.